Welcome to the film cast review of Fast 10. Joining us for this review, she is one of the preeminent fastologists on the internet. Uh, she's also a great film reporter for the LA Times and uh, a great friend. Jen Yamato, welcome back to the film cast. Thank you so much, fellas, for having me. Yay! Great to have you back on, Jen. Your coverage of the Fast movies, both at the LA Times and at the film cast, Two of the preeminent journalistic institutions of our day, obviously, uh, has been greatly appreciated. Before we dive into the Fast 10 review, let's talk about some of the drama around Fast 10. Uh, this was a movie that notoriously had a lot of behind-the-scenes drama. They were weeks into production when Justin Lin abruptly left the project uh, to be replaced by Louis Leterrier. And Devendra, I know you had some strong thoughts on this. we are I think we're all... Yeah. Big fans of Justin Lin. Uh, he helped to revitalize this franchise by this directing... This would not exist without Justin Lin. Exactly. This entire franchise right now. He yeah. shepherded this franchise through many films uh, and he's a very talented action filmmaker as far mm -hmm. as I can, I can tell. And so I think many of us were really worried about what would happen to this movie given all the, the drama. Jen, I don't know if you had any, have any perspective on Justin Lin, but I, I think you're a, a big... Lin fan as well uh, in, in terms of what he's done for these films yes 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 uh, I totally agree with Devendra this franchise would not be on its 10th 10th <laughs> movie 10th main series movie 11 yeah. overall including mm -hmm. spinoff which we yeah. will talk about never um, <laughs> uh, without Justin Lin coming in on Tokyo Drift which I have been personally you know really heartened to see Tokyo Drift get a reappreciation in recent yes. years yes Yes, I, I remember seeing Tokyo Drift like on Blu-ray or something at that point. It may have even been DVD, but I was also like, wow, they did it. They brought Fast and Furious back. This is really cool action, actual like car car races and cool uh, physical effects. And they brought the diesel back. And that was like <laughs> mid 2000s And I was like, I would like to see Vin Diesel more things. You know, I would like I would like beyond the world of Triple X and uh, the Riddick movies. I really think we should bring back Fast and Furious. So, yeah, I feel like in a way I wish this entire franchise into existence. Like that is how much I love the diesel early on and mm -hmm. the first fast and furious. And to see us reach this point, I feel like this is like um, Jeff, when we got to, you know, Avengers end game and everything is like, this is everything you wanted. Yeah. And this, this is kind of everything I wanted, except I wanted Justin Lin to you here mm -hmm. at the end. Well, Devendra, if I recall from a recent After Dark episode, you, your opinion of Vin Diesel has has fallen in recent days because he has. There are reports that he is a bit of a diva, more like Vin Diva, more like if Vin that Diva makes sense, on the set of his movies. Uh, apparently, he is he has not uh, behaved super professionally, according to what we've heard. But um, I uh, I made a TikTok about Fast Ten recently. And uh, I got thousands of, it was about how Fast 10 is the first of a two-part series. And I got thousands of comments basically saying, actually, it's three parts now. Uh, and this is because of remarks that Vin Diesel made. Who knows? At the no. premiere yeah. of Fast 10, where he said that actually, Fast 10 might be the first part of a, three, of a trilogy. Um, this has not been officially confirmed as of this recording. It might be, by the time you're listening to this, it may already have been announced. But um, this is the way he he's worked. He's like, I don't know. I've been thinking about it yeah. on the toilet. Sure. Another movie. Three yeah. movies. Yes. Je Jen Yamato, I am curious. Uh, you uh, are familiar with Vin Diesel's history of making such pronouncements and how accurate they are. Uh, what do you think of the idea that there might be three Fast 10 movies to close out the, the franchise? I have a feeling that it will really depend on how much money Fast X 10, Fast 10 makes. I always see Fast X, Fast X in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, like Devendra, you just said Triple X for the, the series. I always call XXX X, X in X, my X, head. X. That is so much easier, <laughs> Jen. It's so much easier to say XXX. X, X. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think what's really interesting about Vin Diesel coming into his own as a producer in his career through the Fast and Furious movies, through the Riddick movies, is that he has you know, fought for certain things behind the scenes, such as Michelle Rodriguez coming back to the series after being killed off. Obviously, <laughs> we, you know, the I think Fast and Furious, meaning Fast Ampersand Furious, meaning mm -hmm. the fourth Fast Four. and Furious movie yep. is another interesting turning point in terms of how this franchise evolved because it's after this point that Vin, who, you know, 
I wouldn't say he takes credit for it so much as Michelle Rodriguez really publicly gives him credit for pushing to bring her back into the franchise. She's the first main character who gets killed off, who is brought back, Mm -hmm. who is who then the, the narrative is molded around that decision. The, the retconning begins with Tokyo Drift in a way, but also really significantly with Michelle Rodriguez coming back. And she for years has been crediting Vin Diesel with pushing for that behind the scenes. And I think now that he has only built a bigger and bigger social media following, he is also seeming seemingly used that, that public um, weight, that public following that he has as leverage to sort of, perhaps manifest the things that he wants to happen with the franchise Mm -hmm. publicly first. So at CinemaCon, I I think it was CinemaCon where he was like, Fast X will be the first part. It's like a two-parter. And everybody was like, what? What does that mean? (laughs) Now we understand kind of what he means, what he meant then. And so like, if he is currently shepherding the future of, for example, the 11th film, which has not, been started yet or you know they hired two writers one of which i'm really excited for christina hodson um to to write the 11th one but in theory if if you know the future is still a little bit in progress it's still being like charted out i could see him having like a considerable say in what happened so like who maybe he'll figure out a way i mean the, yeah. this, the, the entire franchise is basically his his dungeons and dragons campaign yes like vin diesel has makes... always treated this franchise like a major campaign and like yeah other people write it but we all know he's in there like every day twiddling with the script and like doing stuff there have been reports of that that is like why justin lynn basically gave up it's like vin diesel what are you doing to this movie that i've planned so much for um i do want to say this series is very important to me um because Guys, like this, this is like the big thing that proved like you can have diverse cinema and have it be a global blockbuster and have like a varied cast of all sorts of people have a movie that has subtitles, but people won't be afraid of it. Like, I think the good Vizel, uh, Vin Diesel has done with this. I think Vizel <laughs> has outweighed like whatever he turned into. So I do want to celebrate mm. that at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think for me, uh, I agree. Like, uh, Fast Five in particular you yes. know, was a massive hit, showed you could have a global blockbuster that had a diverse cast, and um, and that's awesome. Like, no, no question about that. I think what really grinds my gears uh, when it comes to Vin Diesel is all this, like, talk both publicly and in the movies about family when, in fact, like, we know that there has been... Uh, at the very least, some manipulations, if not outright backstabbing <laughs> going on uh, behind the scenes. That sounds and like a family to me. That sounds like a family, yeah. <laughs> no, I said it was a functional not. family. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't like when people front one thing and then it's a whole different thing behind the scenes. Anyway, uh, all I, that said, yeah. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping we get to a, a trilogy uh, of these movies just so we can get the fun a uh, fast dozen movie or yes. or you know or I even, it would even prefer fast midnight at the 12 <laughs> mm, it's like okay. on a clock that's you know? a that's a big yeah. leap jeff fast wow. midnight <laughs> so uh, the title would be fast plus a clock right at 12 yeah and every time you say you have to stop now look at the clock <laughs> what numbers are the clock at fast 12 fast i midnight. am i am 100% pulling for the next movie to be called fast 10 part 2 uh, mm-hmm. which would fit in line with the chaotic naming convention of the no, absolutely. Um, or Fast, Fast 10 10 two. dash 2, yeah, yeah. like Final Fantasy X, <laughs> yeah. Final Fantasy X, Ca- two, basically. Like a, a so, Dead yeah. Reckoning Part 2 type situation. Yes. Okay. No, All, they, so, what they would need to do is, is, is do Fast X and then a 2. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're mixing our numerals now yes, even. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so all that's just preamble for the movie itself. So, you know, a, a rich history of these Fast movies. Uh, that is covered in the movie itself, uh, where they they started with uh, jacking uh, DVD VCR combos, and now they're uh, amazing they're stopping international terrorists. But Jen Yamato, all that stuff being sorry, you're about to Jen was about to take a swig of her coffee. Jen Yamato, all that being said, I am curious what your overall thoughts were on Fast Ten. Ooh, what a big, big question, Dave. Mm-hmm. I think. For me, you know, it's like we were talking so much about Tokyo Drift in the the middle era of this franchise being like a real highlight, informative, like really significant. 
pivotal era of this franchise, which is now 22 years old. And Man. it's almost like we've known for several m- movies now that that it's just been like s- raising stakes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, packing more in. To me, personally, it's a little bit much. <laughs> And this is one thing I think that has helped me sort of reckon with the way that these movies have evolved to this point is I grew up watching soap operas, but like the crazy soap operas, Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Days of Our Lives when they were burying women alive and um, (laughs) and like Marlena was possessed by the devil. This is a real high point in my life as a consumer of narrative storytelling and after Days of Our Lives came to Passions, the little known underappreciated Passions, which was like really way out there for soaps. And so for me, this is the closest that I've come to finding another soap opera to watch and to, to in, in my film or television entertainment. Uh, so I find that a really interesting thing. It's like these movies have really leaned into <laughs> just go with it. It's another it's another sibling, you know, that has existed this whole time, but we just haven't told you about, you know, things like that. Or uh, right. I don't know. Nobody's been possessed by the devil yet. But mm-hmm. could that happen? I don't know. Who knows? I, I will say I think Fast 10 is probably the most grounded out of the last three movies. Um, there's no there's no nuclear submarine. There's no uh, cars going into space. Uh, that are major parts of the plot, you know. So this is true, you know. Yes. Uh, but but it's not grounded by that much. Uh, There's still so, a submarine, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thermonuclear bomb that's shaped like a hamster ball. <laughs> grounded. Um, yeah, grounded. super grounded. It, it, li- liter- literally grounded, Jeff. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's a little bit much, but but Jen is loving the soap opera elements. Divin your heart of Curious, what did you think of Fast Ten? I think my main takeaway is that this is not a great Fast and Furious movie. But for me, it was a great time at the movies. And I think that's that's kind of where it is. Like, there, there are movies in this franchise I don't really like very much. Like, Too Fast and Furious, I'm sorry. I, I got no love for you. Oh, I got no oh, love no. for Too Fast Here and Furious. Here we go. Sorry, oh, sorry. I'm fighting but, words. But listen, you can, you can pick and choose. There's so many movies. You can pick and choose, have, have your own thing, whatever. Um, there are some, but, you know, I probably won't want to revisit too much too like i think fast and furious um i remember reviewing that i think we reviewed it together there the ambition of that movie just didn't work with like the special effects and stuff and then it took till fast five for justin lynn to like get the big budget and do what he needed to do i think this one sits firmly like in the middle of the series for me and i'll have to say like i i just had a lot of fun with it and i think the big set pieces are genuinely fun and entertaining um there's there's a big chase through rome pretty much early on in the movie. And I actually just started rewatching fast nine because my wife hadn't seen it. And I kind I like that more than like the forest stuff in fast nine and like the stuff that really gets, gets that movie going. So I, I like the action here. Like, I think it's fun. It's not as like tight or as like technically competent as it is with Justin Lin's movies. But I think Louis Leterrier can make a good action movie. Um, like Jen, you had that bit in your story, like him and Jason Statham, Basically, what watching the first Fast and Furious while making the Transporter, a movie that is also has some really good car action, you know, and he did that whole series. There's actually a nice nod to the Transporter, I think, towards the end of this movie. I'll talk about that in spoilers, but that was fun to see. Um, I think the action is fun. I think, yeah, the series is going full soap opera. And part of the fun of it is getting like really macho guys and people who don't normally like associate themselves with soap operas being like really into the drama of this. So I, I cackle at that. And I think the the sort of like D and D element, the sort of like this is Vin Diesel's like incredible action movie campaign, and he is just like adding more pieces to the puzzle and making it crazier and crazier. I think all that is really entertaining. So I was entertained throughout this movie. It is also fully self aware of how ridiculous it is and how like how did these DVD boosters are now like s- special agents. And an agency calls them for help. And we see more of the agency here, too. And I'm like, I, I don't even know what's up with that organization. So it's it's a lot of fun. I'm really yeah. glad you hear, in, you hear in the trailer, like, they yeah. summarize, you know, the whole history of these people. And I'm, I'm really glad they did that in the movie itself. Because otherwise, yeah. 
you would think that they are completely unaware of how ridiculous this whole thing is. But it is uh, very but, much um, Alec Baldwin in Ghost Protocol, right? Or wh- whichever movie. Like, even, even Hunt, like, is the manifestation of destiny, yeah. basically. Like, <laughs> having both of these movie series together, just giving us ridiculous action. And yeah, there's a lot of CG, but there's also a lot of great practical stuff here, too. I, like, I, I'm, I think this is a bounty. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to reject this. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I have problems with the ending. And we'll, we'll talk about that for yeah. sure. All right. Uh, Jeff Kanata, I want to start by saying thanks for watching this movie with us, Jeff. Because I, <laughs> yeah. I know it's not Jeff's favorite franchise. It is not. But it Jeff, not. what did you think about Fast 10? Well, Dave, I guess you could say what I thought of Fast 10 is best summed up in the form of a limerick. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to be a provoker. But the fast films have been mediocre. (laughs) To revitalize this hero franchise, try a villain that acts like the Joker. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. I actually had a blast with this movie. Whoa. It's my favorite fast (laughs) franchise movie. I'm going to say that. Out of all of them. Out of all of them. Out of all of them. It's my favorite. And the reason (laughs) is Jason Momoa. A hundred percent because they got smart and they realized we can't have a villain that out grunts Vin Diesel. We've been trying that over and over and over. Who is more masculine grunter? Uh, I'll grunt you harder than you. Uh, no, I'll grunt harder than around, you. Jeff, uh, Jeff yeah. Cypher. Cypher has been a major villain for a while. Still is. And Still grunting. Is. She grunts. She's a grunter. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. saying Jason okay. Momoa came in and went, I'm going to be fabulous. I'm going to be the Joker. I'm going to just be chaotic and wacky and goofball and have fun in this goofy, f- silly franchise. And you know what? It made me have fun. I I enjoyed there are large swaths of this movie where there's no Momoa and the movie grinds to a halt in my opinion. <laughs> Needs more uh, Momoa. Yeah, Momoa sections. is Momoa. the fun of this movie. And I agree that the action sequences for the most part are pretty fun. I mean, we're still in a world where <laughs> there's literally a moment toward the end. This, this isn't a spoiler, I don't think. There's literally a moment toward the end where Vin Diesel like wills his car not to get lifted off the ground. Like, <laughs> he just, just because he's driving it, he decides the car can't get lifted off the ground. Yeah. And it's like, what? What is that? He's so good at driving, you guys. So good at driving that he can force his car not to be lifted off the ground. Um, and we're, you know, it, a car operates a, a crane in this movie. You know, a car, uh, there's a lot of things a car does in this movie that a car shouldn't do. And that's always been the goofy fun of the, the later fast movies is, is like, what if an action sequence, but car, you know, like <laughs> normal action sequence where a human would do that, but we'll figure out a way for a car to do it, you know? A human being could jump between two buildings. No, no, no. Car leaps between two buildings. <laughs> you know? um, so there, if you're into that kind of fun, there's plenty of that to be had here. I think the action sequences are, are, are thrilling and, and um, for the most part, great. There's a, there's a few hand-to-hand ones. There's a Michelle Rodriguez uh, hand-to-hand sequence that's, re- I thought, pretty darn fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the movie is overlong. It's bloated. It has, at this point, way too many characters, and it struggles really hard to figure out reasons for these people to be here at all. You know, uh, <laughs> there's like John Cena's like off in his own movie. He's like doing his own movie for the whole. <laughs> there are like, three separate movies. John happening. Cena's movie for a while, yeah. <laughs> um, and and th- so the movie's bloated, and and just like the whole weight of the franchise is is crippling it, but. You know, I've said many times before, this is the meathead comic book movie. These are meathead superheroes, right? Like their superpower is they're good at cars. And you have you have for a while now this franchise fully embracing the tropes of a superhero team movie. I mean, the fran- the Fast franchise is basically just v- Avengers movies. 
Like, what if we just had only Avengers movies yes. and no yeah. individual only movies? Only the highlights. Only the yeah. highlights. It's yeah. only the it's only the team ups. Um, and I think they were smart in going, okay, let's create, let's take literally a example from a great superhero villain and just do our ver it's the meathead joker we have meathead joker in this movie <laughs> and he behaves exactly like the joker would like oh you're super you're, you're, your weakness <laughs> is your love <laughs> and I will <laughs> force you to make decisions about who you love more it's, it's the joker it's straight up um, but the joker meets Jack Sparrow to be to be perfectly clear, like it I don't know. is, I mean, it I is. Think Jack Sparrow is the Joker. You know, I think Jack Sparrow <laughs> stole more from the Joker than vice that versa. That was pre. That was pre the Joker. Yeah, pre well, the Joker. Pre, but, yeah, yeah. I, pre Jack Nicholson. No, it's not. No, no, well, that's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Um, pre -he pre Heath Ledger, the Joker. We were talking which about is, which yeah, is, which yeah, is I think the heaviest different. inspiration for this. Yeah, this version. pre nineteen sixty. Who was that guy? He was pretty wacky too. Cesar Romero. Yes, 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 thank sorry. you. Um, anyway, I actually, like, the movie is not good, but it, there's enough... What is good, you know? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's an existential question. <laughs> <laughs> not this. Yeah. I know what's, what's not good. <laughs> um, but I honestly, like, this is the one I least groaned at because it it was it just completely jumped in with both feet into into silliness and mm -hmm. you know it it's a it's the most high budget b movie that exists right and i i had a good time i had a good time and, and it's jason momoa i didn't have to watch you know the final standoff between the two grunting gruntersons grunting <laughs> at each other while vin diesel triumphs right what i got instead was a much more much more varied levels of thing you know grunting vin diesel against <laughs> that guy you know and i think that's just more fun yeah fair enough uh agreed completely with everything you said about jason momoa uh he's a delight in this movie jen yamato any thoughts on jason momoa did you like what he added to the franchise oh yeah i think he brings such a good energy shift and you need that because we know for sure by now vin diesel's dominic toretto is going to be the the very grave center of the <laughs> yes. fast universe he like he will not deviate from the tone that he's established Dominic Toretto from, which means that everybody else around him has like, it's left to everybody else to balance that out. Yeah. So Jeff, I totally agree with you that that contrast between their energies yeah. uh, really does like keep it entertaining. And I also feel like, you know, Momoa is going off and seeming to have a lot of fun with this. He's probably just like, some scenes I'm like, oh, does he just like throw out some like ad libs and they just. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because you, know? you go, I thought they cast Jason Momoa, right? They cast the next big hulking stud ripped action star. They cast Aquaman. They cast the brooding. They, you know, they, they got to find the next one. They tried John Cena. They tried The Rock. They tried all these guys. You know, they've they got to find the next one. And then Momoa shows up and it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing it. I don't know where in the process they found the character he played. I don't know how much of it is him and how much of it was in the script and all that stuff. But whatever the case, I love that my expectation was, oh, they found the next big, monstrous, strong man to, to put up against Vin Diesel. And what instead they got, we got was, was you know, playing against that type. And because they could have cast like, you know, Sam Rockwell or some like somebody that you knew <laughs> going in was going to bring a weird energy to it. Um, but I love that Momoa, we haven't, I haven't really seen him be that goofy and stuff before. I want to yeah. ask you guys, I have a question about what your take on Momoa's performance, uh, is, do you feel like Momoa's Dante is a queer coded villain? I, I was kind I of feeling so. that. And I, yeah. I will also say, I, I almost wonder if like, is that, is that okay? What you're yeah. doing? Because, because this is the big, like hyper-masculine franchise and the villain is basically this queer coded dude. I'm like, okay, that, that's a little weird. He's having fun. I think everybody's taking it in a fun way. So it is worth having that discussion. Also, part of me was thinking, listen, I'm sure everyone's going to talk about, oh, how energetic Jason Momoa is. But I, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing Jack Sparrow and I'm seeing Heath Ledger's Joker mm. and I'm seeing like a big mixture between them. Like 
it's not as original as I would have liked it to be. Mm. That's the thing. Because if you're going to pretend to be the Joker, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I always planned for you to be here. You fell right into my trap. <laughs> Literally nothing, very little actually like falls to his plans or anything. It's, it's all just coincidence. So, well, the, yeah. the other is similar. I think you guys are even underselling how similar he is to Heath Ledger's yeah, Joker yeah, in the yeah. sense that both Joker in Dark Knight and also Jason Momoa's character in this movie appear to have virtually unlimited resources and time. Like, yeah. They, yeah, have, yeah. they have like access to helicopters and bombs and, you know, uh, uh, they just like literally scores are, of people willing to do whatever they want for them. Yes, yeah. it, precisely. Precisely. Um, I don't understand also how in the in the fiction of this movie, he's been planning this and watching yeah, uh, Dominic yeah. Toretto for years and watching other people almost kill him, <laughs> you know, for many, many years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't think too hard. This is a not yeah. think too hard movie. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll share a few thoughts and then let's get to some spoilers. Uh I will say that I'm pretty torn on this movie, guys. Pretty torn on this movie. Because on the one hand, I was expecting it to be kind of a disaster. It's really rough when a director gets replaced, um, you know, halfway through or a third of the way through, however long the way through they were filming. Uh, most of the time that happens, it goes badly. I'll just list a couple of examples from recent memory. Um, Justice League, right? That's mm -hmm. a really notorious example. Um, I think that movie was like mostly done when Joss Whedon came aboard, if I recall correctly. Um, Han Solo. Yeah, Solo. That was the other one I was going to bring yeah. up. Was Solo with uh, Lord and Miller were directing that one. And they got replaced by Ron Howard, and it's like um, those movies feel like shells of their former self. Uh, whatever you can say about Fast Ten, like I, I was expecting it to be like kind of yes. uh, catastrophic. I yeah. don't think it was. I think it yeah, was. Yeah. It, it was very in line in terms of competence and coherence with yeah. other Fast Fast. You would never movies. be able to detect yeah. any of the drama if you exactly. hadn't known it going in. Precisely yes. correct. Precisely correct. So on that level, I think it is a success. Okay. Um, but I will tell you, I had a very weird experience watching this movie. Uh, <laughs> my wife literally was like in a catatonic state or not literally, <laughs> but like metaphorically was in a catatonic state afterwards because she was like, <laughs> it, 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 the movie made her question why she found other Fast and Furious movies good. Oh, <laughs> no. yeah. Because, yeah. because no, here's the thing. Because about, of how good it was and how it dwarfed <laughs> the other movies? It, it's like, what even is a Fast and Furious movie at this point? It's like, this movie, I'll say, feels much more listless than other Fast yes. and Furious movies. It's yeah. weird for me to complain. I disagree. That, that there's no MacGuffin. The, the MacGuffin wasn't good enough. I mean, in this case, the MacGuffin was the kid. It was Vin Diesel's mm -hmm. child. So yeah. like in it was other already movies, a MacGuffin at one point. Yeah, say what so. you will about the MacGuffins of previous Fast and Furious movies. At least they're an ethos. You know, like at least there were MacGuffins. I did, well, I did. Um, what are you talking no. about? The whole the whole <laughs> franchise is about hashtag family. Yes. What better MacGuffin is literally his blood? Like mm -hmm. oh. fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, there's this parade of cameos that are like so many characters just just absolutely did not. Too many characters. <laughs> Right. Too many characters. Just, they yeah. add nothing. To the good news like is, good news is, from my perspective, who like there are scores of characters from these franchises that I just every second they're on screen, I'm just is is uh, exhausting. Almost nobody is on screen very much. Yeah, you know, there's <laughs> this not is time true. for anybody. I, I will tell you guys, if you can handle biggest, Vin yeah. Diesel. And then you get a whole bunch of Jason Momoa, and then everybody else is just a smattering. Well, and I can weird. handle smatterings of people I don't like. And occasionally you, you cut to Charlie Theron and Michelle Rodriguez together. Like it, it, is, it is separate movies. My one big takeaway though is we are 10 movies into this franchise. Diesel and crew, you know, Toretto and crew have been doing this for 20 years. They're inter they have international enemies. Like they they're <laughs> nation states. They're against these people. <laughs> he lives in a house in LA. There's no safe room. No There's safe. Nothing. No, no nothing. panic room. No panic, no panic room. room. No nothing. Sick, uh, sick barbecue though. They got a sick yeah. barbecue. Yeah. Never really upgraded that barbecue because there are certainly better ones he could get these days. But you, you, you have you know. Rita Moreno in this movie saying nothing of substance at all. Like just, <laughs> just being there, like, I, just like, hey, uh, you, you've you've impressed upon the world the the values of this family. What value? What value? <laughs> doing this? Doing this? Values at some point. Barbecue. What? No. The point of that scene is, isn't it cool that Rita Moreno is in this movie? The, the Rita Moreno. And it, I mean, I am so curious about Brie Larson's involvement in this movie. It's like, sure. this woman has her own franchise. Yeah. Has has an Academy She's Award. She's already a superhero. It's yeah. like, hey, do you want to be tenth build 
in the <laughs> she's an and dude she's an and she's one yeah. of the like four and people yeah you know and that those ands don't come cheap those are expensive ands i think that is the power of, of the diesel you know like he, yeah. he can collect people like pokemon oh you're fun i want you in like brie larson i feel like uh, the mcu is not highlighting you enough come to my franchise yeah. Wait, and so, uh, so it, yeah is, is kerr russell dead in the in the franchise no, he's no, not missing. So, missing. I didn't think yeah. so. So I thought that the reason Brie Larson is in it is because Kurt Russell said no, right? Mm. He said no, and they needed someone of equal stature to stand in. <laughs> she does nothing that Kurt Russell wouldn't have done. They just couldn't get he, Kurt Russell, so they didn't I, get his. You could have ended that movies. sentence before the words that Kurt Russell couldn't have done, and just said she does nothing. <laughs> she, does, think, she definitely uh, does nothing. Going back to the idea of Vin sort of manifesting what he wants for this franchise, mm -hmm. a couple years ago he announced on his Instagram that they were developing an all a, a female led, a female protagonist yes, led spinoff. Yeah. Uh, this is not something that Universal has actually officially. Con uh, confirmed. greenlit or confirmed yeah. and i know like i spoke with jordana brewster for for this movie and she brought it up that's something that she really would like to have see happen because i mean as we see in fast x 10 god fast 10 fast she 10. like she has like one scene it's really hard for even a core member of the franchise who's been there since literally the first movie to get a significant amount of screen time or an arc um and Arcs. You know, There's I, no such thing in this movie. <laughs> well, so my my They've grown. thought is They've like all grown. Yeah. You know, they brought Charlize Theron in to be the big bad in Fast Eight. They uh have brought her back. They could have just been like, okay, bye. She was the big villain in Eight, and now you know that's in the past. But they're bringing in so many familiar faces from the entire franchise, and I think one of the promises of that is that if Charlize Theron can come back into the fold, much like Jason Statham did. Jason Statham got his own spinoff. Maybe it's a Charlize Theron, Brie Larson sort of star power that is mm. big enough to, 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 the, to have the argument that you can sustain a female spinoff mm. with enough box office power. Yeah. So I don't, know. I don't know why either of those two want that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Also, she, she's not part of the family, as this movie makes very clear. Like, there's no, they can't, they can dismiss what a lot of other people have done. And even the Jason Statham thing they had to work on, she killed the mother of Dom's child. Or, or did the, she? The I mean, mother. I don't know. But <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a good question, Jen. Um, uh, one last yeah, thing sometimes. before we get to spoilers, which is just that uh, it is. It has become increasingly sweaty the ways in which they deal with Paul Walker's character of Brian O'Connor in these movies. Yeah, I rewatched just over there. He's, he's right over there. He's, there. he's, fine. he's, he's not fine. here right now. I rewatched the ending of uh, Furious Seven. It is, and by the way, I just want to say, but like, not a fan of how you guys are playing fast and loose with the titles, like Fast Eight, Fast Nine. It's Fate of the Furious and F9, <laughs> the Fast Saga. Okay, let's just be clear. Okay. Um, David but, is nothing if not pedantic. <laughs> Furious 7, I watched the ending. It's uh, like, it made me cry again. It's yeah. it's such a beautifully done yeah. ending. Like, but the it only the works if that's the last movie of the franchise. Exactly. It doesn't right. work if you've got more installments and he's still just not, or not there today. If, if, if think, can you imagine if they had ended the franchise there? That would have been like, oh my, what, like, legendarily amazing ending for a franchise is like, um, with the the music, see you again, and the cars driving off into the distance with the sun lens flaring. Which you hear again. Camera. You hear yeah. the mm -hmm. see you again motif. How in dare the fast they? Time. I know. How dare it's, they? it's so How pathetic that it's a, a motif now. It's like <laughs> it's it, it's so weird. It's such a weird <laughs> artifice that the characters in the movie have been hanging out with him. He's he's just over, he just couldn't show up today. He's busy. But in the, but the coding of the movie is like. Isn't it sad that the real actor died? Like, the, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make light of a, yeah, a, a real yeah. tragedy, which it is, but it's really weird that the movie is like, plays a little tune that's like, it's super sad. We're talking about him. But the mo in the context of the movie, no one's sad because nothing bad <laughs> happened to him. It's it's very weird. Uh, I like uh, this tweet from Heads Fall Off on Twitter who says, like, you know, Letty in the movie saying, Dom, if we don't do something now, then the street racing terrorists are going to bring down the satellites and knock out the entire eastern seaboard. We need to call in every favor we've got. Brian, 
at home watching Succession. <laughs> I mean, technically, Brian is at home watching the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, good dad. Good dad. And uh, Brian and me kids there, man. I've are by now, there. I think they would be teenagers. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have one boy and one girl. Guess which one doesn't have a officially have a name? Oh, man. <laughs> it's the girl. Mm-hmm. They're gonna, if this thing saying, keeps I've going, there. There, there's going to be an AI Paul Walker. Like in one of these. Well, okay. The so, so what yeah. we, what I, I'm we, just saying, I, I've been in that situation where all my friends are out saving the world. And <laughs> I got to be home with the kids. That happens to me. I'm sure that happens to every you, weekend. Vindra. Every weekend. Yeah. What yeah. we, what we know is that uh, Vin Diesel has said it would be hard. I think I'm paraphrasing, but he said it would be hard to imagine closing out the franchise without saying goodbye to Brian O'Connor. So I do think we haven't heard the last of like how that plot line is going to be yeah. resolved. Uh, mm-hmm. And I imagine they're going to kill the character off somehow in, in, in the show. Or they, uh, in, they, in they the don't movie. have to, they could just do the AI bring back and Paul Walker's brother, like helped film some of those scenes yeah. in, in seven. So they could just do that. I, okay. Look, yeah. I, I feel personally, like I don't need them to mm-hmm. push it and like find a way to do something that seems ghoulish. I'm okay with the tension of knowing that he's gone in real life and having that yep. character still be off in the distance in but, in the movies, I'm fine with that. You know, I and yeah. I I also think it's such an impossible position for anybody to be in who's related to like who's actually dictating the future of that franchise. Like, how do you know what the right thing is to do? I'm not sure. I don't personally think it's AI, but I'm okay. Like, I don't need total. You know. I don't need total immersion in the in the reality of this universe. Some people do. Some people, some pe- do. yeah. Some people. You're looking at her. You're yeah. looking at him. Jen. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, I, I would agree with you if the plot wasn't so ridiculous. The problem is they need they want Jordana Brewster in the movie, um, but it doesn't make sense to have Jordana in the movie and not Paul Walker's character in the movie, and especially in this movie. It doesn't yeah. make any sense because well, also, yeah. it doesn't make sense just to have one person taking care of the kid when the kid is your biggest weakness. And there's like this <laughs> impossible force yeah, that's written to destroy exa- your yeah. home. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's a, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. That's, that's yeah. the Send thing. It's the like the kid over to Brian's house. That's what you would <laughs> yes, do. That would it's guarantee true. their safety. Okay. Anyway, but I think um, maybe like, you know, having the kid being little, little Brian, who's uh, Dom's mm-hmm. kid being watched at home by his aunt slash his uncle, his newly <laughs> rediscovered uncle. <laughs> <laughs> that to me falls in line with like Dom Toretto might be like, you know, the center of this hashtag family, but that doesn't mean he's good at like planning or, you know, anticipating yeah. potential future attacks. This is a real by... Jake Sully situation over <laughs> here. Yeah, this, this yeah. you're right. The Fast Head is a commentary on Dom's lack of logistical skills. No, um, by, by this point, <laughs> I'm sure he thinks every time he's done with the mission, you know what this everything is going to be calm it's now. Fine. It's fine. You know? I rebuilt it. They blew up this house. Rebuilt it fully, fully. Yeah. And who you know, same, who same blew piece. up the house? It was Jason Statham. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I, I. I can't imagine they're not thinking somewhere in the back of their heads that there's going to be a version of these fast movies starring the sun, right? Like that, the next generation of. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's going to be a next generation. Yeah. Has anybody watched the animated series? No, I refuse. It's, Didn't know that existed. <laughs> there's a Netflix animated series that I believe is over. Now. It was from like a, a few years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, it centered around a nephew, a Toronto nephew, and his like teenage street racing crew getting into international intrigue. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Were you, uh, you always fan? start with the street racing. Were you a fan of Genyamato? Yeah. I, 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 did, I don't think it was for me, so I didn't really watch them. Too <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so anyway, overall, I, I thought it was... I think I agree with you, Devendra. I think it's like mid-tier. Yeah. Uh, of all the movies, I put it somewhere in the middle. It's not the worst. Uh, certainly not the best. And I think I really f- was taxed by this movie, I would say. I, I, I find it quite ta- I find it Exhausted. quite Exhausted. Yeah, exhausted. I, I was exhausted yeah. by this movie in a way that I didn't feel for the, some of the previous movies. So, like spiritually. Uh, yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> it was kind of a it was kind of a Suicide Squad situation where it's like they caused the problem that they're trying to solve. Anyway, yeah. All right, folks, let's get to spoilers for Fast Ten starting right now. Uh, some pretty big reveals 
towards the end of the movie. But the, the first, the biggest thing I want to say, and you know, uh-huh. I should have covered this in the pre-spoiler, is Fast 10 is half a movie, guys. It's we, half we of knew, a movie. We knew. It just doesn't have part one in there. But yeah. Which, by the way, is like the what I understand to be, there's going to be at least three major big budget blockbusters this summer. Mm-hmm. That are that will end abruptly like this. Of which this is one. <laughs> this I think, really bothers you. Yeah, it does. Bother Has me. this well, bothered I, you before with other franchises? I, I'm only bothered if it's not made clear to the like. Uh. So Dead Reckoning Part One, that's fine. Like they. What about Dune? Weird. Dune, I'm a little bothered by because it wasn't in the marketing. But then when you sit down in the theater, it says Dune Part One on the title. We screen. also we also did you not know? know if there was another Dune coming. Yeah, we so that was a was, big gamble. <laughs> it was yeah. a big, big gamble, but it said Dune Part One. Mm-hmm. In the movie, so that that was fine. Breaking um, Dave, Dawn Part One. Dave hates The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's his least favorite Star Wars movie. I mean, I don't. It believe... just ends abruptly. They're all standing there. What? Where's Han? What's going on? I I think you're right, Dave. Though, because like it was not made explicit anywhere in the materials, the marketing, and I don't know if it would change people's minds about the urgency of going to see it. <laughs> Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's it's half a movie. I, I was bothered. <laughs> Clearly, a lot of people are not. Uh, like Jeff Kanata, I can tell. <laughs> doesn't it, it truly doesn't bother me. If it, like, it was what weird. I was looking for was closure out of this movie, I, I feel like you're in the wrong franchise. Mm. I was reminded of the end of like The Matrix Reloaded, right? Where And you knew yes. there's another movie coming soon, yes. but this one ended right there. And I had the, okay, six months from now, I'm going to get to see the end of this right. story. That's completely, this film, completely yeah. acceptable, in my opinion. Yeah. Like. We know, until, but here it's like this is going to be years before yeah. we get to the end of this movie, right? So, yeah. um, anyway, uh, it bothered I, I me. It bothered me. Some people. That's uh, not, not the thing that bothered me about this okay. movie. All right, so uh, de- death has no meaning in this universe. Death <laughs> has no meaning. We, we already knew that, but like, I don't think we knew the extent to which it had no meaning. There has to. Well, so there is a death in this movie, and I think John Cena's character. I'm sure, they could bring him back, but. It, it does feel like that is he sacrificed himself <sighs> for the goal. And I don't even know why that sacrifice happened because it, it, it seemed like it was we have seen Dom Toretto drive through more difficult things than a bunch of cars coming towards. Him. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. his brother's like, oh, I got to kill myself. I'm sorry. That's the only way this happens. So I don't believe that. But that seems like a legit death. And then to have. Well, not only that. To, yeah. But apparently the whole uh, Natalie Emmanuel crew crashing in the plane, you know, I I don't know. I don't think those guys are going to make it out of there that look like a pretty definitive plane crash, guys. That, that, that. Well, we didn't see the plane crash. We only <laughs> we saw an explosion the behind a mountain. Mm, yes, we, yeah, maybe they, we didn't they, faked, see. they faked it. They're fakers. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, then at the... So th- they blow up this dam, which, by the way, I believe is located in Portugal, uh, a real-life dam located in Portugal. Um, and then the, pl- the Natalie Emanuel plane crashes, and that's, that's bad for them. We find out Jack Reacher is actually... On the enemy side, <laughs> big shock. And well, the uh, one thing that I thought was cool about that is the the notion that uh, I think Momoa brings up is like you always feel like you can just turn people into your allies. Yeah, right? so, that was nice. Yeah. I we literally that. just planted a dude that you assumed was going to be like everybody else who just thinks you're so cool <laughs> that he wants to work with you instead of against you. I well, thought the- that was. That was neat. The John Cena example being the primary example because wasn't mm-hmm. he the antagonist yes. of F Night? Right. So it's like also, the this Rock, is a completely different person. Yeah. This, right. Cena, Charlize, like e- that's the MO of everybody right. gets folded into the good guy team. So mm-hmm. I, Brian, and I, I was like, technically I was like, Brian, too, Brian in the first yeah. movie. Yeah. And it's like, here's an, here's yet another example of this tired trope. But I did, I, I agree with you, Jeff. I did like that they kind of reversed it. It's like, yeah. aha, he's actually bad. It's like, yeah. That was I, nice. I thought that was actually kind of cool. Yeah. That was nice. Okay. Uh, but then two major reveals happen, you know, at the end of the movie. Uh, Gal Gadot shows up in a submarine <laughs> near where near where Michelle Rodriguez and Charlize Theron are. Yeah, and uh, and then in because post-credits- she figured out where they are sure. and knew they were in danger and Le- went left there? the love of her life stringing along, just nursing her loss for years. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this is I'm not joking this is actually kind of a legit bummer to me because yeah. Han's loss of uh, that character was is one of the more poignant elements of the series I remember Absolutely. in yeah. in that freeway chase too like I was in a critic's audience and people screamed when she when she like died like it, yeah. it hit the audience too so I'm like 
I don't yeah. know. Jenny Gen- Mato, what, what are your thoughts on Gal Gadot's return to the franchise? Okay, so I had to save all of this for the spoiler chat yes. because everything that upsets me about this movie from a, from my fan perspective is a spoiler, is the big, <laughs> the big, big swings. Um, Gal coming back as Giselle. It's like, hasn't Han been through enough? But maybe it's man, her twin sister. Let the man be on the dating yes, apps already. Yes. He's moving on with his life. Uh, for me, maybe it's the, not her. Maybe it's her twin sister. We don't know. Well, that's true because we are in soap opera rules. Now. Yes, it could be a doppelganger. It could yes. be a twin. It could be a clone. Could if be a clone. we remember could the sci-fi, we had took yeah. a sci-fi detour in Hobbs and Shaw, which nobody ever addressed no. after that ever again. I thought we said never to like say the title of that movie on this on a Fast and Furious. Uh, he's like nanobot technology. Dude, that's what I thought. <laughs> that scene. That scene when uh, Michelle Rodriguez wakes up next to Charlize and. Yeah. That oh. robot arm. I'm I like, gonna be brain oh, shit. we're yeah. face off. We're face offing. <laughs> it's for swapping faces. I was like, oh hell yeah, that would have been <laughs> sick. Hell yeah, yes. So, but you know, Giselle showing up was kind of also a bummer to me because, like David, you said, it kind of. I can accept one, maybe two returns from the death from yep. the grave, uh, if there's a really, really good reason to bring that character back, but. Giselle's death gave so much meaning to death in the canon of the of this universe because uh first of all what a great mo what a great scene in Fast and Furious 6 on the runway all these things going on Han the la- we see Han's face as he literally watches her fall <laughs> from the what is a Range Rover being hoisted into the sky by an airplane <laughs> anywho we like literally see the grief on Han's face of literally watching the love of his life perish beneath him. He grieves so, so much that he moves to Japan. <laughs> he moves to Japan and like has an existential like Tokyo walkabout that results in the events of Tokyo Drift in which he perishes. It's like all of the meaningful like melodrama and the 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 weight of these these personal connections, these relationships have meaning because of mm-hmm. this loss that he the, suffers. The, the despair was so <gasps> strong, Jen, that it went back in time and you know <laughs> hit the third movie from the sixth movie. That's how that's how powerful it is. Deeply <laughs> meaningful. It is yeah. meaningful guys, that she is dead. You guys are losing sight of the fact that they've already made all the money they can make on those movies. <laughs> They've got new movies to make money on. Yeah, the, and now she's the, Wonder Woman, you know? The, uh, got... Yes, she's so much more high profile now. Yeah. The, it is 100% soap opera logic, or I would, my wheelhouse is, it's it's um, professional wrestling logic, Yeah, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We have a heel turn because we need the pop from the heel turn, and then we can make them a, a, a good guy again at the, it doesn't, ma- none of it matters. All that matters is the pop in the moment. The thing that matters is that when that sub, sub lid opens, some <laughs> reaction happens in the audience. Mm-hmm. We need yeah. to give the, yeah, yeah. the audience some cool thing and she was the only person left lying around. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. Like it, none of it, none of it matters other than, oh, a person I recognize from a thing. <laughs> the details of why she's there, how she's, <laughs> All that we'll worry about that later. Who cares? Jeff, I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're right. But also, you know, Jeff, you're coming to this from a not fan of the yes. franchise perspective. <laughs> from a and deep the non investment. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That First is 100 percent true to me, Jeff. You're welcome. I, you're welcome for getting you into this franchise, Jeff. Because <laughs> this is this is the modern day comic book soap opera. Like we have other than comic stuff. book soap opera. Other than the comic book soap, but this is the thing, and it's such a, like a unique thing. And I, you know, I love that we get to keep talking about it, but I, I am waiting for them to bring back, um, that, that one dude from the first movie who had a Volkswagen. Let's just bring everybody back. Everybody who died. That <laughs> well, dude, I mean, what's there are great characters that yes. fans remember from the movies before, like Suki from Too Fast yes, or Eva Mendes, who did reappear once. And like, that would be so cool if Monica I want her, back. She needs to come back. I want Eva Mendes to just have a you comeback know? in general. So yeah. I, you know, Giselle well, well, coming back does set up, you know, they're bringing in, they're like calling upon all the Avengers to like unite in one final face off. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense to, to me that this is what's happening narratively. 
it just makes me go, oh, so like <laughs> my feelings about Han and Giselle are now, are they invalidated? <laughs> what? Well, Jen, Jen here's, what, here's what I'll say. I thought when they brought back Han, they actually did it very well like they they did this whole backstory and like explained all this stuff and so i'm i'm willing to withhold judgment to see how they explain yes. giselle's presence so like absolutely in three years or whatever when fast 11 comes out we'll see wh- how they explain giselle's presence and maybe yeah. it will be artful and beautiful or maybe it will be cheap and sad and but, but the I han thought- thing we all wanted han to come back like we all <laughs> felt that was a severe injustice mm-hmm. of yes. this franchise yeah. mm-hmm. so it had to be rectified and if you're gonna have jason statham back you damn well better get Han back. So, like Indeed. that was that was justice. The Gal Gadot thing. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But I, I, so I yeah. asked Sung King uh, recently about his feelings on both of these, <laughs> both of those, I guess spoilers because so many of the big reveals. If there, if we say there are three big reveals, big three big twists in Fast Ten, two of them have directly to do with Han. One is. You know, Han going and making nice with Deckard Shaw, mm-hmm. who is for some reason, he's so angry. What does Deckard Shaw have to be so angry about? <laughs> uh, he like legit tried to kill. He thought he killed Han and he was happy about it. Yeah. But OK. He's anyway. annoyed about his spinoff. It didn't turn out so well for him. So. Well, Sun he's King's back. perspective, yeah. I think, is a really cool, chill, very chill one and also a really lovely way to look at it, which is that for him, justice for Han is is making peace is moving forward. And so that's where that scene makes sense. But he also told me that as scripted, it was just like a really quick, they fight, they ha- they trade one blow, one blow, one blow, one blow. And when they were practicing, when they were rehearsing that scene in Fast 10, they just, they, they really put, he and Statham, and I guess Leteria put in a lot of effort to make the action meaningful mm-hmm. uh, from a character perspective. So compared to what, I guess initially it was planned, which is just like a like a rock versus diesel face off, you know, before they grudgingly go, oh, you're OK. I feel like there is a lot more history and meaning and future, you know, forward looking uh, resolution in that one action scene uh, between them. Rock, rock that, versus rock versus diesel or Shaw versus diesel? Rock which, versus diesel. Like, okay. yeah. like you know, in um, yeah. Fast, Fast Five. five. Yeah. I see. I see. Gotcha. gotcha. OK. Um, oh. Yeah, so so Sung King's perspective on forgiving Shaw, I think, is what they're moving forward in the spirit of. And with Giselle, I, he said that he he thought it was a long time coming. It would make sense within the Fast universe. Okay, well, we will see. Uh, of course, we also uh, mentioned that uh, Hobbs, right, the Dwayne the Rock Johnson character, is back. Um, a development that was spoiled by some publications publicly before the movie even came out. I didn't out. see that. I didn't very, see that. I was very genuinely shocked by that. Yeah. A major publication that shall remain nameless spoiled it for everyone, which is pretty tasteless in my opinion. Um, and uh, this is interesting. How is that working? Yeah. This, this is interesting because uh, the, Dwayne The Rock, you know, people use misuse the term feud a lot, but I would say that they actually have like an ongoing public conflict Mm-hmm. Um, where yeah, but the... Black Adam tanked, so <laughs> yeah. But but Dwayne the Rock Daddy Johnson needs a hit. <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson has publicly denounced Vin Diesel and like mm-hmm. called him manipulative in public, and um, they notoriously like have refused to appear on screen at the same time. They didn't appear on screen in this movie, and I think it's also possible they're not going to appear on screen in the next movie. We have um, the technology to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but anyway. Fun, fun surprise. Also, uh, Jason Momoa, clearly one of those uh, serial killers that likes to put a lot of work into arts and crafts. Like he has a whole freaking modern art uh, visual exhibit yeah. for Vin Diesel as well as Hobbs, uh, which is just very considerate. It helps him get in very the mood. Very considerate. You know? And very considerate. They always, the, the serial killers <laughs> always leave it on when, they, when they're gone. So that someone can walk into the room and all the images are still playing. <laughs> Absolutely. Very considerate of serial so, killers. Super, to do super that. considerate. Super considerate. Yeah. All right. Um, any, any Jen, any thoughts on Hobbs coming back or or uh, I enjoyed it. I yeah. enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, you know, like I think the setup uh, of that scene, that post credit scene, uh, you kind of know where it's going. And by the time a lot of people see it, they certainly will have had it spoiled in some form. 
But even knowing what, that The Rock was going to show up in some form when I, by the time I was able to see it, because the first time I saw the movie at a press screening, they kept it off the the screening. Anyway, oh wow! Um, so I went back and I watched it again just to see The Rock's credit tag <laughs> and. The way that he delivers just a few lines actually, for me, injected a lot of excitement back into the movie. Um, it made a lot of a lot more sense uh, as opposed to if it didn't if that scene didn't exist. And you're like, uh, Dante, do you remember who actually killed your bro- your father? Because uh, I wasn't dumb. Um, <laughs> technically, in Fast Five, you know, at the end of Fast Five. Yeah. Yes, dumb and Brian. Also Brian, but you also know, Brian. let's leave Brian alone. <laughs> uh, technically, so it is Hobbs who goes and puts like a couple of bullets in in Ray's. Well, also, one of the most corpse. like cold blooded, yeah, cold like, blooded killings. Yes. Like just no, no, no away, fanfare, boom, boom. no one liner, yeah. just boom, pop, pop. Like he's he's which dead. you know made a lot more sense at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then now there's a little bit of like retconning around characters and emotions and the past. But Man. for me, watching you know Dante's like uh, t- taunting Hobbs in this scene, but then then hearing The Rock like go back to like his WWE days was actually it was really exciting for him. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm in for this. Yeah, I, I smell mean, like, yeah. what he is cooking. Nobody's et cooking, etc. Et et I kind of cackled because again, the background machinations to make mm. that happen what what did it take yeah for the rock to be humbled by it the, the it's a black adam yeah. tanking yeah i well, guess and taking took the balance a, of power in the dc universe not shifting <laughs> not shifting um, but you know what? like i think of all franchises where certainly every single studio franchise that is successful or not has a fair degree of drama behind the scenes mm-hmm. that we mostly don't hear about mostly does not see daylight because the uh, the stars don't feud dr- publicly on instagram but this one at least in the last yeah. few years the whole cast has been very upfront about there being drama it's inescapable yeah. so it's not like anyone's really trying to hide it yeah you know it's it's just interesting and also like two of the biggest egos in hollywood basically like clashing together in a franchise like what what does this mean for the next one there there are two like behind the scene things i want to see i want to see the Justin Lin stuff, like, or at least like learn more about what happened. And I hope like he is off doing his own like great things. Um, and I, I want to see how the rock came back. Like to me, that's just interesting from like a uh, insider perspective, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, I think we should wrap it up there. Uh, Cause we are, we're running a little bit long here. Uh, but Jen Yamato is a film reporter at the LA times. We really appreciate her joining us today and providing her expertise on the fast franchise and Jen, we'd love if you, I already put an opinion in it, you know, we'd love if you come back in a couple years when hopefully the franchise will come to an end with fast 11. We'll see. Uh, maybe it'll be fast 12, but either way, Jen Yamato, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I will certainly come back for fast X X X. Mm. Oh, <laughs> fast triple X. Mm-hmm. Crossover, uh, please. Uh, yeah, you can find more episodes. Oh, oh and, and I, sh- I should also mention, of course, at the end of the day, it's really impressive that Louis Leterrier made a movie. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. read Jen's story about how he made this movie too, because <laughs> it's insane. Apparently, like, he wrote the, the script work. in three days with with no sleep, is if I recall correctly. Yeah. But anyway, on the flight, uh, like, yeah, it doesn't feel the like job. that. I mean, the movie's Man. ridiculous, but I, yeah. I, I, I think impressive. they chose. I think they chose the best, absolute best person to step into the pre-production who knew this franchise yeah. Yeah. inside and out, who appreciated things like Los Bandoleros, which it, only real fans know about. It and feels like it a, the text of the movie. If, 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 if a true Fast and Furious fan were, mm-hmm. were tapped to make the next movie, this it kind of feels like that without mm. being a fan service movie. The one thing I want to point out, by the way, um, I love those like late 90s BMWs. Uh, that all the bad guys have at the end that is a true transporter nod to me mm. I know Louis, Louis Leterrier knows what he's doing putting those cars in this movie mm. thank you so much for watching this video of the film cast check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like subscribe and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future you can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes and support this podcast at patreon.com slash film podcast where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.